work quietly and follow along. At any point, click the pause button to catch up or take a break. First, what we have is a regular piece of paper. This paper is a little more thicker to observe our watercolor. And I'm going to be using painter's tape. This is just one inch tape and ripping it in pieces. I'm placing my tape along the border around the edge. And I'm doing that by using my two fingers to line up the edge and then I'm pushing it down. You're going to want to make sure that the edge closest to the inside of your paper is very, very sealed tight. This is where a watercolor will um, be applied and this creates a wonderful border and edge to your painting work. Here we go. Next, what you're going to do is we're going to take a pencil and we're going to be drawing, I'm going to refer to the uh, painting the example again. We're gonna be drawing a line for where this mountain range kind of divides from the sky When you draw your mountain range, I'm going a little bit up probably about a hand worth from the bottom and Let's look at it one last time here. We're just looking at this really thick line It's sort of triangular think about a, a mountain range how they're not perfectly even they're all different sizes and shapes I'll show you. I work left to right because I am right-handed and that way I can just simply drag my pencil across the page. I'm going to have my mountain range be about a third of the page down. I'm going to go up, kind of keeping some nice sharper edge, making sure my lines aren't rounded. They can have some jagged edges as well. Just like that. Perfect. Now we're going to do the sky and this is super fun because we get to use watercolor. I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to be doing reds, purples, and oranges beginning with purple at the top. You want to choose colors that are side by side on the color wheel. The sky, like is, let's think about real life. Your sky would be, um, it kind of fades and like an ombre into one color to the next. That's how you would want your picture to be as well. So for example, purple turns into blue, then blue turns into green, and green turns into yellow. I want you also to notice how I'm applying the watercolor. I'm using a little more pigment than water, so I get really nice dark tones. If I get a little too dry, I always can come back in with some water. Once your watercolor has dried, we're now going to take a thick, this is actually like a, just considered a fine point Sharpie, and we're gonna go over our pencil line, just like this. Awesome. The thick Sharpie really helps define that horizon line. Next, with your pencil, we're gonna break up um, some of these spaces. I'm gonna refer back to our examples again to really show the sides of the mountain and that it has some kind of shadow where the light is not hitting it. And when you make your mountain, it's really cool to do all different, you know, wiggly lines. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Let's compare these two examples. One has more wiggly lines and one has more straighter lines. It just depends what kind of effect you want. To me, the one on the left shows a little more snowy, more, I don't know, mysterious, uh, more like an avalanche is gonna happen where the one on the right really looks like it just had like a blow over type of snow. So whatever you'd like to do, you are the artist, you get a choice. Here's how you do this. With a pencil, we are going to find like the tip of our mountain or what you would consider the top. 
put your pencil there and drag it down, moving your pencil all different angles, different edges. And now we're gonna go to the left, almost creating like a triangle. So it's almost like a triangle because we have this side, this side, and then the top of our mountain. We're gonna do that every time we see a point. And I like to just make mine all different. It may not be exactly like a triangle every time, but whenever we see a point, we're gonna be doing something kind of like that. Okay. And do, and then over here would kind of be one to kind of come off the edge here. Another thing you can do, and I'm gonna bring back my examples, is show different spaces where the mountain would kind of indent. Because mountains have all different bumps and textures as well. Here in these other spaces of the mountain, we want to show that it just actually moves with the earth and it's not just a flat surface. Bumping, mountains are kind of bumpy. So to do that, I'm going to pick a space and I'm going to create some interesting shapes that have like a really bumpy edge. You can put multiple together. Maybe you want one down here more. But on any side of the mountain, if you want, you can add those. They can be long and skinny. They could be kind of wide, adding multiple ones. And I'm just kind of letting my pencil, I'm keeping my hand really tight, but I'm letting my pencil just really do the work for that. With my Sharpie, I'm gonna go over all those lines. And now I'm gonna use an eraser to erase after I use the Sharpie, just to really clean up my work and make it look extremely neat. That way I have no extra pencil lines and when people are viewing my work, they won't see if I was a little off from my previous line. Next in our drawing, we're gonna use the element of line to appear that our mountain is shaded. We're gonna do that by taking your picture I'm tilting it and I'm using it to the right because that diagonal direction really brings out the side of the mountain and the movement of the earth. So now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm using a Sharpie. I'm being very, very careful and I'm drawing lines. They are extremely close together. The closer your lines are together, the more darker or shaded, it will appear from far away. So you as the artist have control of that. Now that I just use the element of line, to shade the side of my mountain, just like in this one as well. We are now going to focus on the bottom half of the scene. You can create anything you want, but referring to the artist style, she uses a lot of silhouettes. That is just like a black shape of something. And it looks so good with the trees because trees are a really good solid shape and they break up the landscape as well. Speaking of landscape, Let's get one started. What you need is a line across below your mountains. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be rounded slightly, that's fine. But this is gonna divide up the mountain part of the region or of our picture and then the part of the picture that's a little more closer to us, okay? So on that line, I'm gonna use my Sharpie and I'm gonna go over it. This line, the horizon line, also is a really great place to start adding some trees. Here is how you draw some trees you would find outside in the forest. First, I draw a line. That will determine how tall my tree is. So you can have a taller line or a shorter line. And with my Sharpie, I'm doing little scribbly strokes, kind of in a fan motion. And I'm rotating my hand. And as I get further down the tree, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm making sure it's nicely filled in as well and has a nice little tip on it. You can always go back and add a tip. And also you can thicken that line at the bottom for the stump or the trunk of the tree. 
Let's do another one side by side. This tree is going to be a little shorter because my line is shorter. So I just filled in a bunch of trees. The trees are a really great addition to your picture because they really help show um, where your mountains lie in a space. Are they closer to us? Are they farther away? So they're giving the viewer a sense of the scale or how big they are. You know, whether they're just little ice cubes we're seeing or now, but we know they're more mountains versus other kind of icicles or things because these are trees and they're giving an idea of, oh, how big is a mountain in real life compared to a tree that is a little bit closer to us? So keep that in mind and that's why we did that the way we did. Other things you can add to your picture are another um, layer of land. So you can do another curve just like that and kind of make it come different ways. This shows that the land is moving. It has hills, things like that. In this example, I added like a river going through. I also added a little camper's tent and a wood cottage. In this example, I also did a river because I really like how that looks with ice chunks. And I added more trees along my new horizon line. Don't forget to add a little campfire if you want. The fun thing about this, it's very naturey, and you can add so many things, maybe different animals that you would find in the forest. Um, any kind of scenery and I want you to think about things that we humans do that we can associate with the outdoors and I'm going to now draw a little campers tent so if you're interested in doing the campers tent here is how you do it first I'm going to make a large arc like so next I'm going to follow my first arc and then I'm going to come down so it makes one big giant arc. So it looks like that. Small arc and big arc. Next, I'm also going to do an arc. It's rather small. It goes like this, connecting this point to that point of the arc. I'm going to do that again in the front of my tent. Up and down. This, our brains will recognize as a tent because our line is really thin like stakes are in a tent. So if you want, you can bring those out. And then I am going to draw a line across here and from here to that back arc. That really shows that the tent is laying flat on the ground. The other lines support the idea that the tent is a curved three-dimensional shape. You can add a small door to your tent, things like that even like a small window on the side. And I always love to add my personal favorite, a little campfire. It just really sets the tone for the outdoors. I just draw a little wood and a little flame. Flame can be like a teardrop shape, so it's rather rounded at the bottom and comes towards the top. You can even add like a little smoke and sizzle. Those are just ideas and ways you can add the outdoor feeling and how humans interact with the beautiful environment like the galaxy sky. Thanks for watching.